Do you remember learning how to ride a bike? I remember when I was five years old getting my first real push bike and being very proud of myself as I learned to zoom up and down our long concrete driveway and up and down the footpath in front of our house, feeling so proud of myself that I was such a good rider on my big boy bike. But of course, I was a good rider because I had two training wheels that did most of the work of balancing for me. When the time came that my dad finally said, time to get those training wheels off, son, that I became terribly frightened and stiffened up and lost all balance and wobbled and fell off, as of course we probably all did in our first attempts at riding a bike. Taking those training wheels off was terrifying and I wanted to put them back on because I knew how to ride a bike with training wheels and I didn't have any idea, I couldn't yet imagine the kind of freedom and speed and maneuverability that riding a bike without training wheels would one day hold for me. Well, for 40 days after Jesus rose from the dead, he showed himself alive to his disciples. And we hear this in the book of Acts, but we don't hear very much about what Jesus did in that time, what he said and did. So it can become a nice exercise to just to contemplate and to wonder what might Jesus have been saying to his disciples? What might he have shown them now that he was indeed risen from the dead? What new perspectives, what new teaching might he have given them that they were then able to take and proclaim to the whole world after Pentecost? Those 40 days with Jesus must have been like having training wheels because they, the disciples could rely on Jesus being right in front of them, speaking human words once again, revealing to them the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But then... On the 40th day, with the day we celebrate today of Ascension, we hear that Jesus withdrew from them. He was taken away from their sight as he ascended to his rightful place at the Father's right-hand side in heaven. Today, in Ascension, we celebrate that. We celebrate Jesus' exaltation, his majesty, and his ascension to where he always was with his Father. But also we can look at the perspective of the disciples, what it must have been like for them, how frightened they must have been, how confused they must have been. We do hear they rejoiced and, as they made their way back to Jerusalem, but we also know that they were frightened and locked, locked themselves in the room for fear. We hear that on the day of Pentecost. They were frightened as they waited. And so the disciples, I'm sure, more than once must have wished they could have gone back to how it was before, back to when Jesus was still showing himself to them, being with them each day. They wished they could have had their training wheels again because, like me with a bicycle, they could probably at that stage not have imagined what it would have been like to be filled with the Holy Spirit. What it would be like when Jesus was no longer standing in front of them, but rather the power and life of Jesus was within them in a whole new way. This is what happens at Pentecost. The Spirit of God, the Spirit of Jesus, whom we all call the Holy Spirit, comes to dwell powerfully in the hearts and minds and lives of those first apostles and disciples. And at Pentecost, we'll hear the incredible impact this small group of early believers is able to make as they powerfully preach to the people first of Jerusalem and 3,000 people respond on that first day and are baptized. And then very quickly, they begin to proclaim the good news of Jesus to the ends of the, the, the known world. For us right now, we can use this time of, 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 between Ascension and Pentecost to anticipate the coming of the Holy Spirit. Of course, we have already received the Holy Spirit in various different ways, but because God is infinite, because the Spirit is infinite, there is always more. There's always more that God can do and God will do and God wants to do in us. And so I invite you to tap into that desire, that openness that you would invite the Holy Spirit, welcome the Holy Spirit, anticipate the Spirit to come and inspire you, to enthuse you, to do new things in and through you. So that Pentecost next week might be a real celebration of what you've already received, but also of what new thing God may desire to do in you, to be filled with the Holy Spirit again, afresh, once more.